Let's take a quick peek here at our grain market activity just to get you up to speed. And on the corn market with our quotes provided by Bar Chart today, still showing weakness. Nothing has changed. We have July corn still trading firmer than the December contract is. July down eight and a quarter cents at 651 per bushel. December down 17 and a half at 563 and three quarters. Uh, boy, they're really taking um, big bites out of this grain market here today. On the soybean trade, so far you have that July contract now a penny higher at 1473 and a quarter. You have to look far and wide to find any plus signs in the grain complex today. We have November 18 and a quarter lower at 1377 per bushel. Now onto the wheat and in Chicago wheat, we have a lot of pressure today. July down 19 and three quarters at 654 and three quarters per bushel. And on the Kansas City market here, we have July down 22 and a half cents. We're at 605 and a half. And these quotes from bar chart show the Minneapolis wheat on July 7 lower at 739 and a half. Now we have some uh, winter wheat condition numbers that came out from USDA yesterday. And granted, it is uh, in uh, the start of harvest season here, but Texas is rated at 25% good to excellent. That's down four points from a week ago. Oklahoma up a point at 61% good to excellent. Kansas down a point at 64%. Nebraska up two points at 58%. And South Dakota went down one point. They only have 22% rated good to excellent in South Dakota. And as far as winter wheat harvest goes, we're just kind of getting started uh, pretty well. Texas still way behind average at 30% done. They normally would have 55% done. Oklahoma 10%. They normally would have 41% out of the field already. Kansas would normally have 7% and they're just now getting started. Brian Hoops joins us now. He's with Midwest Market Solutions in Springfield, Missouri. So the harvest is really having a hard time getting too much momentum today, Brian. Um, from what we understand, interviewing one of the custom harvesters just a little bit ago, he was saying that there's so much rain in Texas that a lot of them are having to pull out of the state and head north toward Kansas already. What do you think? Yeah, you know, I've heard the same thing, Marlon, and good morning, by the way. Um, talked to a client from Texas this morning, central Texas area, where they're talking about a lot of sprout in their uh, wheat, over 7%, which is pretty high, and that's directly a result of uh, the uh, all the moisture they've had, all the rain they've had. There's, uh, you know, concerns popping up a little bit about some disease as well. So, um, you know, they need to dry out is what they need to do and, and uh, get the harvest rolling along. He did report that with all the rain, though, that their corn harvest looks to be probably the best they've ever had in that region. So, it's, you know, it's hurting the wheat crop, but it's really going to help out the corn crop as, uh, you know, as they get into their stages for harvesting. So we have December corn really feeling the pressure today, down 17 cents right now at 564. But how much is this putting a crimp in um, uh, selling of new crop for 21 and even for the 22 crop? I see uh, December of 22 corn is dropping nine and a quarter cents right now. It's down to 503 and a quarter. Uh, another day like this, it'll be with a four handle on the front. Is that going to really slow down any um, advanced sales here on new crop? Well, you know, I really think so because, you know, it's just our, our nature that we don't want to sell on, on down markets. We don't want to sell when prices are cheaper when we could have had, you know, $6 or higher or higher money, no matter what it is. It's just not human nature that you want to sell. Plus, when you have um, a, a crop that's really suffering from dryness right now, we're seeing extreme dryness in this market. That is going to continue to be a, a detriment, I think, to this to this uh, farmer selling. They don't want to sell uh, right now when things are extremely dry like they are uh, and maybe not end up with a crop because, you know, everybody knows that these weather models can change on a dime. And if we come into the uh, next couple of days and, and rain's taken out of the forecast or the rains next week are a real bust, we could be adding these uh, bushels right or this price right back onto this uh, crop that we're taking off here in the last several days. Okay, we'll take a look at cattle and hog markets when we come back. We're talking with Brian Hoops. We'll return in a moment. Ed Serwin of CZ Cattle Market Analytics in Amarillo puts together cattle market information for us, and he has a, a, a measurement of what the average steer carcass weights were here last week. And actually, they went down last week compared to the week before. They came in with steer carcass weights at 884 pounds, that compares to 888 the week before and compare it to a year ago when it was 891 pounds. 
The Choice Select spread last week was $32.35. That was up significantly from the week before when it was 27 and a quarter. A year ago, it was only 11.37. As we take a look at our futures trade on the live cattle board right now, we uh, currently have the live cattle futures on the August up $1.22 now at $122.50, almost on the high of the day. On the feeder cattle market, we had some big gains there. They're gaining steam. August up to 17 now at 156.77. And on lean hogs, they have really struggled here for about a week straight. August now down $1.40 at 113.40. Brian, we were talking about the uh, decrease in the steer carcass weights last week. And with all the heat moving into the plains, it sounds like it might be kind of a tough go to put much weight on those animals next week. Yeah, I really believe that to be the case, Marlon. You've got a lot of heat coming in here that's going to be hard just to keep weights on. Plus, with the high corn values, there's not a real strong incentive to feed these animals out to heavier weights. So we're doing a good job of pulling these cattle ahead. In fact, there was a little bit of trade yesterday. Uh, Packers in Nebraska needing cattle pretty aggressively. We've heard 121 to 122. In fact, maybe even a little bit of 124 on some cattle um, that were, were badly needed. And uh, that sets a tone for stronger cash markets this week. Cattle facts show this numbers down from a week ago, about 10,000 head. Uh, smaller. So uh, the overall tone, I think, will be positive for the cash markets this week. And you can see the futures trying to anticipate that. There have been up, uh, what, five consecutive sessions now. And that's interesting that you had a higher cash trade, possibly, but we had a weaker uh, beef cutout market yesterday. And in that afternoon update, boy, we had a nosedive in the values. And on the choice cuts yesterday afternoon from USDA, uh, we had the choice cuts going down $2.09, and you had the selects down $1.80. We will get some new numbers in about 35 minutes from right now, and we'll see if they change much. By the way, the wholesale pork trade was sharply lower yesterday as well. Brian, thanks for the time. Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions joining us here this morning. Janet, back to you.